Alright, hello guys. In this video, we have a very exciting topic. We're going to talk about how January can go from looking like this to looking like this in a matter of one week. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends and family if they do live in the impacted regions. Let's get right into things. So here was our January forecast that we put out, well, about 14 days ago back in December. And it's actually done quite well. Now, there's a few things that are a little bit off so far. We're only at the halfway mark of January, so it's not too late. But some of the good things about this forecast was that southeast warm temperatures there. If you live there, you can definitely confirm that it has been warm in those regions. I should have maybe extended that a little bit further north, but we do have cold air on the way for the very northern regions, especially in the Midwest, Great Lakes, and Northeast. So I think this is going to even out and actually look quite accurate. And we're about to see very cold temperatures enter some of the Rockies and, like I said before, Midwest. So this is really going to help solidify this forecast, I believe. And I think overall this is still going to do very, very well, even though some of you in the East probably don't believe it. We're about to talk about kind of that whole topic in this video. So this is what I showed in the beginning of the video. This is called the CFS model, and that's a climate model. And it does weekly runs here, so we can see... This is the weekly forecast on that model from the 21st to the 28th. And things are looking really warm in the southeast. Even the Great Lakes in the northeast, actually. But we do see some cold up there for Montana and the Dakotas. And that's eventually going to make its way eastward, as we're going to see on the next frame. Which is going to be super exciting. Alright, so as you can see here, it definitely does a full flip, as you saw in the beginning of the video. This is the forecast from the 21st through the 28th, and as you can see, very cold temperatures for the Midwest, Northeast, and even the Southeast there uh, through the Mid-Atlantic. In those kind of shades that are kind of turning purplish, that's where we're 5 to 9 degrees below average Celsius on a whole week. So this model is expecting it to be frigid from the 21st through the 28th. Definitely a huge cool down that we've been waiting for a lot of us a lot of you are happy that it's been warm but i know that there is a majority of you actually that have been wishing for the cold to come finally specifically so that we could see some snow chances which if you watched yesterday's video the snow chances are on the way which is some exciting news as well and then here's the forecast from the 28th through the 4th of february and you can see it's more exciting news for you cold weather lovers and snow lovers the southeast mid-atlantic northeast and the great lakes all are even looking colder than the 21st through the 28th so two two whole weeks of very far below normal temperatures at least super exciting stuff there for us cold and snow lovers i know a lot of you warm lovers are probably disappointed but hey it was warm for a very long time we had a big winter thaw there uh, and now it's time for the cold to come in and the snow it looks like this isn't completely written in stone for sure gonna happen but we're pretty darn sure as the teleconnections which we're going to show at the end are looking very favorable as well i've held off on showing you guys this for quite a while now because i wanted to make sure and i'm pretty sure at this point now, we're about to start talking about the 4th through the 11th, and then the 11th through the 18th, and even the 18th through the 25th on this model, which all looks very exciting as well. Alright, so first off, here's the 4th through the 11th, and it's not looking quite as cold, but definitely you can see blue for the eastern United States and yellow for the west. The thing that's important about it being yellow out west for the east is that that usually would indicate we have a positive PNA, which means all the cold air usually gets funneled down to the eastern United States. If it's cold in the west, that's where all the cold is going, and typically we would see a ridge in the east. So the warm in the west is really a big determining factor in why the cold is out east and in the central United States. And as you can see, like I said, it's a little bit of a lighter blue here from the 4th through the 11th. This could be that the model is indicating it won't be quite as cold, or also it just might be a little bit of uncertainty. The CFS is uh, four members, and it goes over 12 runs, so it's kind of like an ensemble model in a way. So it sometimes loses certainty as we get a little bit later on. Obviously, the forecast becomes a lot and a lot less likely as we move on. So definitely the later portion of January is a lot more likely to have colder temperatures than early February. But I'm just showing you this to show what the model is indicating as of right now. And as you can see, by the 11th through the 18th, it becomes a little more certain that actually we will have some colder temperatures from Minnesota, Wisconsin, and down through into the northeast and southeast. We're looking at a pretty solid amount of below average temperatures there. Uh, and then here's the 18th through the 25th, the last frame here. 
And you can see it also has some very cold temperatures there, particularly for the Midwest, Great Lakes, and New England. So you're probably picking up on the fact that this model, at least right now, it's a little early to say, but this model definitely thinks February could be really cold in the east, which isn't something we've seen for December or January. So it would be really uh, neat to see February come around and have the really frigid temperatures and snowy conditions. So we'll just have to wait and see on that. But right now, things are leaning towards that happening. All right, now we're about to start talking about some other models and then also February as a whole, and we will look at some other exciting stuff as well. Now, first off, I wanted to take a look at some other models just to kind of solidify the point. It's not really smart to go based off of one model. So I just wanted to show that all the models are kind of in agreement here. On the thumbnail, I used the European Ensemble model. So you could see that that one was clearly calling for cold in the east there for late January. That was a five-day uh, outlook, I think, in the thumbnail. I'm not going to show that one in here, but definitely uh, if you look at the European Ensemble model, that's what it shows. Uh, now, the GEFS model here... You can see this is for the 14th through the 19th, and that 19th looks to be a really turn, a real turning point. Now, as we move on to the 18th to the 23rd, you can really see the cold enters the central and eastern United States here on the GEFS, which is the GFS and Sama model. Uh, now, let's look at NOAA's forecast. I wanted to show what the National Weather Service is showing, just so you guys could really see a very reliable source. Uh, some of you think our new viewers and haven't really seen what I'm what I do so a lot of you probably want to see another source showing it and here's Noah's forecast in the 6 to 10 days so this is from the 19th through the 23rd this is what they're showing some below average temperatures for the east obviously and then the 8 to 14 day outlook which is going to be the 21st through the 27th they're showing this so clearly they have the cold in the east as well so you might be wondering, what is causing all this to happen? Let's take a look at our teleconnections here, and this is going to tell us the full story. Starting out with the Arctic Oscillation, or AO for short, you can see right now, if you look at the very left side, we're at a 4 there on the AO, which is very, very positive, and that usually encourages warm temperatures in the United States. As that heads negative, it encourages more and more cold air in the United States, and especially if it goes fully negative, which this model is showing happen around the 25th, but really we get more towards a neutral by time we're at about the 18th, which is going to help with cold air development for sure at least. Now here's our North Atlantic Oscillation, which is our for short NAO, and you can see we're at about a 2 right now, but we're going to drop by the 18th all the way to below neutral so we're going to be on the negative side and maybe pop positive and then back negative but overall we're going to be in a more cold look on these two teleconnections and then here's your PNA I talked a lot about this one earlier in the video and this one's actually going to be the most important here and really driving the pattern you can see we were at a negative almost five which is almost historic levels of a negative PNA, and we really, for cold in the eastern United States, want this one to go positive. And you can see 14th, again, we're close to a negative 5, and we're going to go all the way to maybe a positive 1 or 2 by the 18th and 19th. So that's going to really turn things around, and I think that's going to be the main factor that really, really turns around our pattern here. And you can see that you can see that stays positive all the way through the end of the month, which is going to be really good for cold in the east. And I think that's, the like I've said a couple times now, the main reason why we're going to have cold in the east here to end January. Now, we're about to talk about our overall February forecast on the CFS model. I wanted to show that because that's also exciting. So we're about to get into that, which is going to be super cool. All right, so here's that February forecast on the CFS. So this is going to be from the beginning to end of February on the CFS model. And this model has a tendency to be wrong sometimes, just like all models, it be right. So don't take this too literally. This You need to take this with a grain of salt for sure. But we can see that it is right now calling for colder than normal temperatures for the Midwest, Great Lakes, Central United States, and all the way through the Northeastern United States, and at least a bit of cold there for the Southeast as well. Mid-Atlantic also looking cold. So very exciting stuff on this model. It looks to encourage a lot of cold and snow for the East. We're going to have to watch and see, obviously. We're only at the 14th of January, so February is a bit far out, but we definitely can see that at least 
from about the 18th through the end of January is looking really, really cold, which is probably what a lot of you have been waiting for. I've seen it in the comments. So I just wanted to go ahead and tell you guys the news. Again, I've waited pretty long to share this with you guys because the models have been doing pretty bad lately in the medium range. So I wanted to wait as long as possible, but I felt like now was the time because I've seen other sources talking about it and I hate not being, you know, one of the first. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends and family, and I'll see you guys in the next video.